Hi, this is BK for ManForWars.com, where I'm promoting polite patriotism to help nice ladies and gents worldwide offline, teach kids to look, talk, and feel great, and to help people worldwide offline locally discuss and share great info they find online, offline, as better people making better places to live and giving people a chance to see stuff they normally don't, consider it and think for themselves, and get better politicians and results because more informed and empowered people can put better politicians in and they can demand better from their government than simply what they usually get. So check out manforwars.com for more on that and see the links below for the latest on what to do now as well during this COVID-19 pandemic crisis. Uh, but this video is called um, President Trump, We Know. Fire Fauci and Burks now or be tried for treason one way or another. President Trump, we know. Fire Fauci and Burks now or be tried for treason one way or another. And it's man to man. I'd say it to his face. I'd say it to anybody's face. Girls, it'll take the edge off the mannerized sword a bit, but but it's still, I'd say it to anybody face to face, right? And I've got my reasons for it here. Um, <clears throat> and so, um, you know, first of all, uh, we know. We know about Fauci and Burks. We know about Bill Gates, right? Um, you can check out band.video for an excellent uh, short video um, uh, exposing Bill Gates and his eugenics past where he's part of this uh, family of eugenicists ties to Planned Parenthood, uh, left Microsoft, uh, which was sort of founded with IBM, uh, Nazi links. Um, he's part of a cabal, right? And uh, he's since moved into uh, health, GAVI, the Global Alliance for Vaccination and Immunization or whatever. And he's pushing vaccines. He's basically practicing on the third world. Uh, there's pe Africans revolting against this going, we, well, this is crazy. We go get your tetanus shot and we can't have kids anymore. It sterilizes people. The church is coming out against it, blah, blah, blah. So Bill Gates is bad news. And you, look, you can look into that more for yourself. Um, but to talk about Fauci and Burks, um, you know, just making the Bill Gates connection uh, quickly and practically. We know, right? We know that Fauci and Burks both have big money Bill Gates conflicts of interest, right? And uh, for example, and you can find many out there, this is uh, from uh, National File. Uh, National File is an American independent media organization. There it is, National File. And Fauci and Burks both have big money Bill Gates conflicts of interest. It says the president is racing to save lives, and they are a pro-Trump news organization, right? But I'm going to explain to you how, you know, that can be a good thing, but can also be a bad thing. We've got to keep all options on the table. Otherwise, we could run into some serious problems if we have uh, serious blind spots, right? And like everybody, uh, Trump's a man, and uh, and he's fallible. He's fallible to bad information. Excuse me. Um, trying to get this sort of evenish. Anyway. He's, he's, you know, fallible, uh, you know, when it comes to bad information, bad advice, or he could be lying, right? Now, I'm a fan of a lot of what he's done, and uh, I'm a fan of, of uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the way um, he's sort of improved the mood and the economy and patriotism and nationalism versus globalism. But I'm also not a fan of how he's ignoring some of his biggest backers like Breitbart News uh, supporters, Infowars supporters, nothing but hostile media in the White House, independent media not allowed to, to, to provide some counterbalance to that, to both promote some of the things, uh, good things he's done and hold his feet to the fire in a more intelligent way than the typical uh, snarky professional lying bitches in the mainstream media, making more bitches who make more bitches who make more bitches out of their supporters, which makes it hard for them to respect each other and communicate well or let anyone else, which is why so many weak people demand you know, more and more censorship as opposed to strong people who can hear something stupid and laugh or hear something smart and enjoy it and possibly share it. And so that's a real issue. Um, but I'm going to go briefly into this um, National File article, and you can find it for yourself, and you can look look up other uh, things. And there's, you know, these people uh, are not just making this up. These people are researching this, right? So this is Fauci and Burks both have big money Bill Gates conflicts of interest. The president is trying to save lives is the byline by Patrick Howley from April 7th, 2020. Right? And there's a shot of Bill Gates there. It says here, President Donald Trump is fighting to find a medical solution for coronavirus in the short term, expressing hope that the anti-malaria drug chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine can help patients suffering from the Chinese virus. The truth is that President Trump is locked in an intense power struggle with Bill Gates, who is pushing his vaccines, which may not be available to the public until after November's election. 
and they could also be very, very dangerous when combined with ID2020, uh, a program to sort of ID everyone in the world by using vaccines to have a global tracking system where if you don't have this ID, the biblical mark of the beast, as it were, then you cannot leave your house. You cannot go certain places. If you go to the bank, go to the mall, you got to scan your hand with a little chip in it or whatever. So, um, <clears throat> so you know, there's many issues there. It says here, Gates has a lot of pull in the medical world. He has a multi-million dollar relationship with Dr. Fauci. And Fauci originally took the Gates line supporting vaccines and casting doubt on chloroquine. Coronavirus response team member Dr. Deborah Burks, appointed by the former President Obama to serve as United States Global AIDS Coordinator, also sits on the board of a group that has received billions from Gates Foundation. And Burks reportedly used a disputed Bill Gates-funded model for the White House coronavirus effort. So... There's a bit on Fauci and Burks, and you can look into that more for yourself. Um, but, but, you know, the bottom line is that, um, you know, um, Fauci is a veteran bureaucrat. He doesn't even practice medicine. He practices being a deep state bureaucrat. He's been with the National Institutes of Health uh, in the U.S. since 1985, right? He's not doing research. He's doing more interview these days. Burks uh, was practicing AIDS uh, in Africa. And AIDS, the reason um, uh, AIDS um, is huge in Africa, you know, with mostly Muslim and Christian countries, and they're not having as much sex as we are in the West, um, you know, when it comes to Tinder and dating apps and all the bareback boning since the 80s, right? The reason AIDS is huge in Africa and not huge in the West, despite being a huge threat, you know, 35 years ago or whatever, um, is because AIDS is fake. They have not isolated the HIV virus. They don't photograph it, right? AIDS tests, you can use the same AIDS test. If you get nine out of 10 different markers, symptoms of AIDS, different genetic material that's typically associated with what they say the AIDS virus is, if you get nine out of 10 in Europe or France or America or Canada or something, then they'll say you have AIDS. In Africa, if you get five out of 10 on the same damn test, then they'll say you have AIDS. And I did an interview with David Crow, C-R-O-W-E, uh, AIDS can't be found or cured. David Crow has a simple explanation. You can look into that more. So that's more news. And Obama made Deborah Burks uh, the global AIDS coordinator. And she basically said before this uh, coronavirus uh, outbreak, she was working on curing AIDS in Africa, which basically means taking people who have AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, or your immune system's weak, possibly because you're starving or you're stressed or you're taking drugs or you're in a war-torn area, diagnosing them with a weak immune system, which is what the test does, and then calling it AIDS if you use an AIDS test to do it, right? So Fauci's bad news, right? And Fauci and Burks both, right? A lot of these people, they get multi-million dollar or billion dollar grants to study something that they never actually really cure. There's no commercial interest, especially when it's a grant to an academic or a researcher or whatever, right? It's not like, well, we gotta make this product, we gotta make this phone. And then we gotta we gotta make this phone, make it cheap, you know, relatively, have some profit margins, figure out how to ship it and distribute it. And if it works, we make money. If not, we go out of business, right? That's not how a lot of research works. A lot of research works where they say, hey, we'll give you, you know, a fifty million dollar grant to study cancer. Now you put forty million in your pocket, you spend five million on a research team, a bunch of college students that want to learn stuff, and you you know, you take the other five million and you know, you you you, you use it to you know, read old studies or whatever, right? A lot of this stuff is bullshit, right? That's why they've been trying to cure cancer for 80 years and still not any closer. And they make you pink ribbons, walk, run, and bike in your Nikes or whatever. And every year we're going to cure it one day, right? Just like World AIDS Day, the 35th anniversary of World's AIDS, AIDS Day was in 2018. It's like, well, what happened in the West? How come, you know, they said straight people, they said gay people get it for sure. You know, a lot of intravenous drug users, a lot of heavy partying, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, questionable lifestyles, weaken your immune system, use this test, diagnose you with that. But what about everybody else? It was supposed to be a huge epidemic here. And why is it more of an epidemic in Christian and Muslim African countries than it is in atheistic countries like uh, large parts of the U.S., large parts of the West, large parts of Canada, and so on, where people are having sex all over the place and yet nobody's getting AIDS. Why? Because they want to promote promiscuity in the West, uh, divide and conquer people, break up families, get kids having sex young so they're less likely to bond and have strong families later. I don't want to go into a whole AIDS thing, but I'm just trying to show you that these guys are bad news and there's a reason for that. And we know and this article doesn't go into all of that, but you can find lots of information that talk at least about their conflict of interests, 
when it comes to Dr. Anthony Fauci and Dr. Deborah Birx, especially with their connections to Bill Gates, who, uh, who is pushing, who's sort of the global leader when it comes to the response to this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, right? He even launched Event 201 in October of 2019, where they had an exercise preparing for this. And then in November, the Broadway play launched and it launched in China, which is a UN ally. UN built up China to be the new sort of global role model, take over for the US, Im Im implement control systems worldwide, hand the world over to the UN, World Health Organization, global government, right? So that's a short form for that. But, but the bottom line is, they planned Event 201 in October. They had a bunch of people there. You can look at all the documentation. They said, if a coronavirus outbreak happened, this is exactly what we would do. And then a month later in November of 2019, a coronavirus outbreak happened. And then in January, the World Health Organization and other groups were still saying, you know, don't worry, it's just a flu. Don't be racist. Don't be whatever. Don't be anti-Chinese. Don't be anything. Keep the borders open. Go out. And then February, March, they say, oh my God, we screwed up. This thing is way worse than we thought. Our computer models say that millions will die, so everybody, you know, stay in, ho in your homes and we lock everything down. Then they dial back those computer models because the assumptions were wrong, the data was wrong. They could easily say, well, you know, one person like me, you know, could infect, let's see, computer model, one person, how many could they infect? 25 people? No, make that 25 million people. One times 25 million people. Oh my God, if four people go outside, 100 million people could die, according to my computer model, right? That's, it's that simple, right? It's that simple, especially when you don't really know, when you haven't, you don't have a whole, the whole population tested in the sample and they still don't typically isolate and photograph the virus. We see illustrations done by artists, right? Um, so, so we know, we know, we know this is bullshit. And if we don't know, you can just research what I'm saying yourself and then we'll know and pass it on and then we'll know, right? So <clears throat> the first thing is we know. So um, Trump has to fire Fauci and Burks or he'll be tried for treason one way or another. Um, so I'll skip that and um, I'll get to um, <clears throat> I'll get to what is treasonous and, and what is an issue here, right? And this is from April 27th, 2016 from The Hill, sort of mainstream uh, Washington uh, a political uh, paper or website that uh, reports pretty, pretty kind of uh, down the middle uh, on a lot of Washington politics, right? Maybe a bit more left, a bit more, but whatever. They're pretty down the middle. They just kind of tell you what's happening. And it says here, April 27th, 2016, at 2.15 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time by Julian Haddam filed under national security. It says here, Trump warns against false song of globalism, right? And I remember hearing this. I thought it was great. I thought it was awesome as a nationalist trying to help people prepare their own nationalist security strategies versus the globalist UN uh, communist China takeover, right? Um, I love it. I love the idea. And I love the fact that uh, uh, somebody uh, campaigning for president or being elected president would think like this. And um, it says here, you know, it says um, in a major foreign policy address on Wednesday, right? This is in April of, of 2016, before he took office in January of 2017. Although he's made statements since, he's given great speeches against globalism at the United Nations itself. So he has been fairly consistent on a lot of this stuff, while still sometimes kind of uh, 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 caving to certain globalist ideals and policies like he's doing now. But this is what he said. He said, we will no longer surrender this country or its people to the false song of globalism. I am skeptical of international unions that tie us up and bring America down. And under my administration, we will never enter America into any agreement that reduces our ability to control our own affairs. The nation state remains the true foundation for happiness and harmony. That's the quote. And it says here, uh, Trump's comments are among the most vivid depiction yet of his profound doubt in the framework of global institutions that have dominated the globe since the end of World War II, right? And some critics crapped on that, um, but the bottom line is, there it is, there is the quote right there. And you can find it on YouTube, it's certainly a famous one, and there's many other statements he's echoed, right? Um, <clears throat> but when it comes to that, what is globalism? The United Nations and the World Health Organization telling the whole world what to do, getting the whole world to lock down 
uh, communist Chinese style so that we're all kind of defenseless while communist China goes back to work 30 days later, whatever ramped up production back in business. You guys all stay home. We'll make stuff for you. You send us paper and then we make you stuff and then we use that paper to buy you. No problem. Right. So China's back. Right. Um, and, and so what is globalism? If not this, right. What is globalism? If not the UN, right. And, and the world health organization, an affiliated body, right. The world trade organization, all these bodies, right. Which should not be making policy at most. They should be a Starbucks. You should, I don't mind if they run a Starbucks. I don't mind if the head of the UN or, or Tedros, uh, head of the world health organization runs a Starbucks and he's a barista and Trump and other world leaders meet there and they have coffee and they discuss their own parties or their own policies and their own bilateral trade agreements. But the fact that the policies are coming top down from them, that is globalism, right? And so Trump said he'd never surrender the U.S. to the false song of globalism. Guess what he's doing now, right? Um, so I'm going to get into, um, you know, what is treason, right? What is treason? Treason are actions that subvert national security, right? If you are uh, committing acts, that could destroy your country, right? That could cost your country its life. That's treason, right? You kill you kill somebody, that's murder, right? You know, you um, you, you spy uh, on behalf of a foreign government, uh, and then the knowledge you have could destroy the government and the country. That's treason, right? So basically, um, when it comes to Bill Gates and his bad news buddies destroying America and the rest of the world, right? We've got to save America, America role model for the world, especially when it's nationalist and not globalist and, uh, and, and encouraging other countries to be nationalist. Fantastic. That all countries can be unique and protect their borders, cultures, economies, and be great places to live and visit and have their people in control of their countries where the people up say, no, we want, we vote for politicians. They tell us what they want to do. We choose the ones we like. They make policies and there's no body above that telling these countries what to do, right? Like we have now, right? Um, but, but you know, when it comes to Bill Gates and his bad news buddies, Fauci and Burks and others, and, uh, they, you know, they want, they're making vaccine money and uh, they want more control by a world government. And you've got the um, uh, executive director of health emergencies, uh, Michael Ray, I believe his name is. Um, you know, he's in my Who Shot You song in the description below. You can check, check out his uh, statements there where he said he wants to vaccinate the entire world. He recently came out with a statement, and this is the previous one was a, a couple of weeks ago. His latest statement a couple of days ago is he's saying, we need to make sure uh, because the virus is likely spreading in families, families where people are, are living near each other, right? Moms and dads and kids, because the virus is spreading among them, we have to go into your house. We have to test you. And then if you seem to have a fever or something we can call coronavirus, well, there's lots of coronaviruses, but say we call it COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2, then we have to isolate and quarantine you, right? Now, when it comes to that whole testing mechanism, who the hell knows? A lot of corruption. There's been some bad tests, some tests laced with COVID-19, some tests reportedly only 50, 60% accurate. But if they have that kind of power and they want that kind of power, then they'll use it. And all those questions and all those anomalies with respect to this process will be swept aside, brushed aside, censored, made illegal to say, and so on. So that's a huge issue. So, um, so when it comes to this, um, you know, Trump could be tried for treason uh, for selling the U.S. out to globalism, to the U.N., to the World Health Organization, to going along with their demands, to copying China's model, to destroying the First Amendment censorship, which he kind of fought against, at least verbally, but didn't really fight against in terms of online that much. And he kind of fought against in terms of saying fake news, which we all love, but didn't really fight against in terms of building up the alternative media, people like Breitbart, Infowars.com, National File, and others, the people that are, that are his true base, didn't really talk to them as much as he did the New York Times and CBS News and others, right? Fox News, you know, and so on, right? One American News Network, another independent organization that's kind of Trump-friendly, kind of replacing Fox News in terms of his favorite news organization, right? Um, but, but, but so he's kind of, kind of, he's kind of defended the First Amendment, right? Um, you know, but also hasn't, right? Hasn't cracked down on the big tech stopo, big tech, YouTube, Facebook, and others for censoring patriots and people worldwide, right? And alternative information. So it's a mixed bag, right? So that, you know, First Amendment didn't defend. Second Amendment says he's going to defend, did a good job and certainly made um, uh, guns an essential service and gun stores an essential service nationwide in the U.S. So that's good. Right. But other amendments, the Third Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, uh, right to unreasonable search and seizure, all of those are under threat 
if these global policies coming from these globalist institutions, which super rich people above them kind of tell what to do. So they tell the world what to do because that's how they want to control the whole world. And this is then increasing their control over it. Um, you know, that's treasonous to, to sort of go along with that. Right. Um, and so um, and so that's on the world government stuff, not to belabor that. The, so, so one way or another, he'll be tried for treason, right? Even if we get out of this, and, and this is a huge thing, right? It's possible he could be tried for treason for going along with all this stuff thanks to Fauci and Burks and other policies and not sensibly, when it comes to major health decisions, getting a second opinion, right? That's a figure of speech. You know, the doctor says, you know, you could get therapy, but you need surgery. And you're like, surgery? I just, I, I, well, I want a second opinion before I go for a major surgery. People often do that. They get a second doctor to, 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 to give them advice. Why? Not because they don't respect doctors, because they're not morons, right? And doctors could be corrupt. Doctors could lie. Doctors could be working for big pharma. Doctors could get $5,000 for performing a surgery and, and get, you know, 500 bucks for a referral to a physiotherapist to fix your problem that way, right? Um, and, and so, and so, you know, when it comes to this, right, it's treasonous not to look for a second opinion, or if you count, uh, president Trump's, uh, health advisor team as a collection of opinions, maybe there's 10 opinions then to get a second set of opinions, right. From other doctors that question uh, a lot of what, you know, his current health team is telling him, especially when it's supposedly the biggest health crisis in history. You want all the information in the world. We're destroying America and America's economy and the world and the world's economy. We're locking people down worldwide in what looks like a planned uh, effort top down from globalist institutions, which is a false song that we shouldn't be surrendering to. Um, so all of that's treasonous, right? All of that's treasonous. And so if at the end of this, we come out of it, come out of this, then Trump could be tried for treason for going that far and screwing that many people, trying to save 100,000 people from dying from the flu, uh, killing 10 million people with a depression, uh, weakening America so it's never a global leader again, and China takes over. Uh, you know, America can't be uh, the uh, the trade leader. America can't have the reserve currency. America can't be the dominant player in the world economy. So who steps into that? China. Cranked up their manufacturing, cranked up their this, lots of money to lend, a lot of it American, send them money, buy stuff. They use that money, buy us, like other places in the West, Canada, Europe, Australia, and so on, right? So um, so that's treasonous, right? What's going on right now is treasonous, which is why he's got to fire Fauci and Burks, right? And you may not think so, but do the math yourself, right? Um, and the second way, um, you know, he could be tried for treason is the Democrats, right? The Democrats, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Jerry Nadler, Adam Schiff, the rest of the Democrats, right? Demon rats, right? Absolutely awful people. But in the latest stimulus bill, they are, and Pelosi's already verbally floated this out, they are looking for an after action report. They're looking to investigate President Trump and his handling of this crisis. So, you know, he could be seen as treasonous for destroying America by the Democrats, for not locking down people early enough, right? For, for not uh, going far enough, for whatever, whatever. Whatever excuse they have to destroy him and take this sort of patriot leader and nationalist leader and nationalist icon worldwide and destroy him forever. So nobody ever thinks about being a nationalist or a patriot fighting for your country and your country's sovereignty again, right? He could be destroyed that way, martyred to the cause, except it's illegal or, 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 or unfashionable and possibly illegal to be a nationalist or a patriot anymore. So nobody fights for their country's sovereignty anymore. We're all supposed to be uh, amenable to globalism. The UN, World Health Organization, World Trade Organization, International Criminal Court, other groups running our lives who we don't vote for. We're not one of millions of people controlling our country. We're one of 7 billion ants less important than the earth to live. And so kind of, you know, stay in your homes, you know, the, the new global communism, climate change, UN Agenda 21, where the rich people take all the world's resources, say we're bad, we're using too much. Meanwhile, they do whatever they want and they can peel off carbon tax money themselves like it's nothing. They print it from nothing or they have a crap load of it while the rest of us have to get it all jacked up, carbon taxes jacked up so we use less. This is all part of that agenda, only it's now moving in instead of the guise of climate change. Uh, it's now moving in under the guise of a health emergency, right? Or the whole country or most of the country or most of the world on welfare, right? Just getting basic stimulus money packages, gruel, 
delivered to your house by Amazon drones, right, where they deliver your daily rations of 1,200 calories per person or whatever of paste or Soylent Green made of people, right? That's sort of a globalist communism, and that's what's going on right now. So either way, um, treasonous to sell out to these bodies or Democrats um, will uh, investigate and with the power of the mass media, with the power of the censorship, with the power of the police state, with the power of the lockdown quarantines, with the power to corrupt mail-in uh, voting for the next presidential election, they could steal everything. They could stop people from saying anything about it. They could stop people from organizing to defend themselves against it all under this emergency. And so at the end of that process, whether Trump's you know, uh, guilty of treason for selling out to the globalists and a bunch of patriots hang him, or whether Trump's uh, guilty of treason because the Democrats lie um, you know, about uh, a lot of what he's done and get away with it with no, no way to stop him, you know, maybe we're only allowed 400 megabytes a month worth of, worth of internet because so many people are on the internet because nobody can go out that we can't use the internet for hours and hours a day and post videos like this and share and maybe you're limited to messaging. Maybe everything that's not official like is happening now on YouTube and other uh, WhatsApp and other sort of mediums is seen as, um, as, uh, as, uh, as misinformation, right? So under those conditions, there's no way patriots and nationalists can defend Trump against their investigation. And therefore, he will be tried for treason that way, as a treasonous scumbag, right, who should be uh, an example to any nationalists or patriots who question the official narrative ever again, right? And he could be tried and hanged for that, right? Um, now I'm going to get into another, another theory here, which is, you know, a sad theory for me to bring up. But at this point, right, when we are facing an existential threat, it's important to put all the possibilities out there, right? Because I don't like getting sucker punched, right? I don't like people messing with me. I don't like bald-faced liars messing with me. And I'm not saying that this is for real, uh, for certain. But I'm saying I'm putting the possibility out there, man to man. I'd say it to any man's face, including Trump's face. And I'd, I'd, I'd say, can you talk about this? If you get your manties in a bunch or your panties in a bunch, then I don't trust you, right? If you can, then I'll trust you, right? But um, the other possibility is, is President Donald J. Trump the new William J. Clinton? Is President Donald Trump the new President Bill Clinton? Right? Because he could be. He could be just like Bill Clinton. Right? And I'll tell you how. Right? I remember, I might be dating myself, but I think I'm worth it. But I remember um, having a great time during the Clinton years. Right? I had a great time. Um, you know, we were in a great mood. The economy was was doing really well, or at least I didn't notice any really bad things happening. Obviously, there's always good and bad, but generally speaking, we were in a good mood. The economy was great. He seemed like a great guy playing the saxophone. Charming kind of guy you'd want to have a beer with. That's right. President Bill Clinton. Oh, he likes the girls. Well, hey, who doesn't? You know what I mean? When they're likable, hell, it's a lot of fun, right? Like, that's he was fun, right? So, great economy, good mood, fun guy on TV, and yet he secretly sold the U.S. out to China right? He secretly sold the U.S. out and the world out to China. How? He let China, which was supposedly a poor third world country back in the 90s, he, under Clinton, under the Clinton administration, he uh, brought China uh, as part of a globalist plan. There were people above this that were pushing for this, right? But the bottom line is he was the president when it happened. He helped bring China into the World Trade Organization, right? There are people who had concerns. Oh, China, communist country. Oh, China, no human rights. Oh, China, they execute anybody that disagrees. Oh, China, and then people are like, well, no, they're a poor country. So the idea is that, yes, they have, they're communist and they have human rights violations, but if we bring them into the club, if we bring them into the, um, the, 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 uh, the world system, then all that influence of us. See, look at us. Freedom, rock and roll, prosperity, blue jeans, say what you want, mean what you say, ba ba ba. Then China would uh, would be like, oh, that's a better idea. You know what? Let's adopt U.S. style freedom and prosperity, guaranteed individual rights, or a democracy with the will of the people. You know, whether you're a republic or a democracy, there's something there, right? But that's not what happened, right? That's not what China did. China just used the money to get rich, and they kept all their communism and control systems and 
they have their communist capitalist hybrid now where they um, they don't innovate as much as they steal technology from around the world. They've got some innovation. There's certainly some smart Chinese people. Look at Hong Kong. Those people are great, right? They fought like crazy to stop China from taking over, right? Recently until the quarantines and lockdowns that shut that down in China, in Hong Kong, shut down the yellow vests in France, shut down the patriots in America, shut down, it shut down everybody, right? So they don't have to worry about that stuff anymore, right? Um, but when it comes to China, Bill Clinton um, secretly uh, helped, uh, secretly, because it was the economy was good, good mood. I didn't know what was happening. There were giant World Trade Organization protests going on, hundreds of thousands of people protesting against the WTO, against the G20 or G7 meetings. But um, with the protest model, we're really mad. We already know, as opposed to the offline Infowar model, which is get together as friends, meet or get together as people who know, meet, develop relationships, feel like acting, have meetings, meet and greet tables, use posters, flyers, DVDs, stickers, inform and wake your neighbors. So you're not just yelling, we're really mad. We already know. Oh crap. Here come the cops. We got to run. Let's go. Let's go. Right? No. Instead of that, reaching out to your neighbors, connecting with them, helping them think for themselves, that would have been a way to wake everybody else up. But I didn't know that much about those protests back then. I was having fun, right? And a lot of other people were as well. But secretly what was happening, the reason those people were all worked up is because this was happening. So under Clinton, uh, China was let into the World Trade Organization without having to do anything. They didn't have to fix their human rights standards. They didn't have to fix their environmental standards. They didn't have to have a minimum wage. They didn't have to. They didn't have to do anything, right? They were just like, just let them in anyway. You know, we trust that if we're if we're cool, they'll see how cool we are and they'll start copying us, right? No, no. They just increased their power, and I think some of the key power players in this knew that, right? And um, and they gave them a most favored nation trading status, which means that they are the most favored nation you want to trade with. Right. And so that means that, you know, companies were like, OK, so I can make this for, you know, uh, fifteen dollars an hour in, in America, Canada, U.S., you know, Europe or whatever. I can make this for five dollars an hour in the Philippines, you know, in Costa Rica, maybe or, 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 or Bolivia. But I can make this for one dollar an hour in China and I can beat my workers and, and kill them if they disagree with me. And I can dump all the pollution in the river and I can pump it all out in smokestacks and you don't give a crap? Wow, You're, it's great to have a communist government that doesn't give a shit about its people or anybody else and allows us to do whatever we want, right? So it corrupts uh, corporations, right? It allows them to make things for cheap and it increases China's you know, money, power and control, right? So it, it, the communist party got bigger and stronger over the last you know, 30 years or so, 30, 30, 30 plus years. So that was under Bill Clinton, right? Now, I bring that up to say, is Trump the new Clinton, right? Where Trump is like, great mood, great economy, fun guy, right? The Simpsons TV show, which predicts a lot of stuff, which turns out to be true. They predicted 9-11 on some, you know, flyers or something where it was the World Trade Center towers there and binoculars or something. Um, you know, there's a bunch of little clues in the Simpsons. They predicted this pandemic where they said, well, we have to release a bioweapon. We have to test it. Oh, it works great. And they predicted Trump's election where Trump was coming down the escalator because in, a, in an episode of the Simpsons cartoon where Lisa Simpson was the, uh, the, the future president or something, it was in the future in, in the TV show universe, there's a shot of President Trump coming down the escalator and kind of waving to talk about how Trump was president. This was years ago, this is 20 years ago, way before anybody thought that this billionaire, uh, celebrity, uh, real estate developer uh, would, 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 would ever be president. It was just a funny thing to put in a cartoon right? But the Simpsons episode had him coming down an escalator, kind of waving to people exactly the same way Trump came down an escalator with Melania to sort of wave to everybody and announce he was running for president, right? So that happened some 20 years later after the Simpsons TV show. So it could be a huge trick, right? But so Trump, um, you know, he's got us all in a great mood, at least the nationalists and patriots, people that hate him, hate him, right? Fair enough, right? Um, but for the people that like him, Puts you in a great mood, funny, charming guy, a lot like Clinton, uh, great economy, the best economy in history, right? Yeah, best economy. The indi there's indicators 
that, that indicate that there's obviously some shakiness and corruption and so on. But in terms of the job market, in terms of African-American unemployment, the lowest in history, Hispanic unemployment, lowest in history, Asian-American unemployment, lowest in history, women's unemployment, lowest in history, everybody's unemployment, lowest in history, right? And that sort of thing. Yeah, did a great job, right? So great mood, great economy, fun guy, right? But was his job to secretly trap uh, and bribe patriots to sell out the U.S. to China and globalism? Was that Trump's job, right? Was that the whole thing? Was that the whole thing where it's like, hey, you patriots, all right, you're making money, you're this and that, right? You're doing well, everyone's making money, everyone's doing well, great, you know, don't say anything bad about me, you know how much the media hates me, right? So generally say some good things about me. Don't hold my feet to the fire that, that hard when it comes to hiring people from the swamp to work in my administration, uh, not defending people like General Flynn, national security advisor who Trump got rid of uh, when there was some controversy, the FBI, uh, early in his presidency, he was like, hey, I'm General Flynn. I actually want to clean up the national security state. And Trump was like, great, you know, come on in. And then the FBI was like, actually, he talked to a Russian. It's like, he's supposed to talk to Russians. It's, oh, but he talked to a Russian and Trump had to fire him. And for the last three years, General Flynn's been in court trying to clear his good name, right? He didn't even do anything wrong, right? Um, but, but due to the pressure, you know, General Flynn was gone, right? Um, and, and there's a bunch of other things where it's like, well, he's doing great, see this, and I don't like that, but I'll still defend him because look at how much the media hates him, right? So obviously he must be good, right? But the mainstream media conversation isn't that nuanced and detailed when it comes to attacking him, right? It's pretty surface attacks. Um, and the patriot conversation uh, often isn't that critical of him, right? And if you are critical of him, a lot of people don't like you. So that's an issue. Um, so, um, so yeah, you know, he might have been there to secretly trap and bribe patriots to sell out the U.S. to China in globalism, right? That is a legitimate possibility. So I'm not saying that for sure. I hate to even bring it up, but we are now dealing with an existential crisis, either the biggest health crisis in history or the biggest freedom and democracy crisis in history or some combination of both. And so we've got to put everything out there and say, okay, let's just put it all on the table and let's see what we can do with it, right? And I hope I'm wrong, but if 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 I'm if I'm but either way, this is an an, an explanation that has to mitigate our response. So, um, so what's the solution? The solution is simple: um, get Trump to fire Fauci and Burks. Don't just make excuses for the fact that well he's trying to save America. He's mentioning hydroxychloroquine, but not really doing a great job about explaining it the way the average person who's read about it can. Um, he's he's you know he wants to get the economy back, but he's also got to listen to the health advisors. No. Get rid of these two. They're compromised. You know, they're, 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 they have conflicts of interest. Get other health professionals in there that can say, look, we, we need to be safe, but we don't need to destroy the country to try and fight the flu, right? Um, and we don't need to destroy the world and the world's economy to try and fight the flu. We don't need to listen to globalist organizations, which you said we shouldn't do, right? So fire Fauci and Burks. Um, and then um, use the, even if there's backlash, use the independent media. Trump can use the independent media to promote everything to Americans. Now that the mainstream media has made a topic okay to talk about, all patriots can reach out to more people who are more open-minded because it's safe and normal to talk about this as opposed to bringing up a coronavirus or a vaccine risks or, or, or whatever six months ago where people would be like, what? You know, but now that the media, mainstream media has made it okay, then boom, it's it's sort of fair game where people are like, well, I know I'm supposed to be interested in this and learn about it and talk about it and so on. So sure, what do you got, right? Um, and so Trump can use the independent media to promote the message and get the truth out to the American public. And then the American public can use the offline information war with meetings, get together, learn to like each other, learn to see who's trustworthy, build friendships and relationships from there meet and greet tables, posters, flyers, DVDs, let everybody in your neighborhood know what's up, what happened, how this happened, take all this long stuff, hours of research, distill it into little things, little, you think, put some websites on there, there you go. That's a solution, right? Um, so um, there you have it, you know, um, as I said, President Trump, fire Fauci and Burks or be tried for treason one way or another. I hope I've made a compelling case for why that may be true. Uh, and why, you know, there's stuff that we can do. And uh, and this is something that we should consider too. And there you have it. So BK for manforwars.com. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, get in touch with questions, answers, 
uh, ideas to work together or financial support, see more at the links below. Uh, otherwise, I hope this helps and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.